Welcome back to another video. For everyone who doesn't know me, my name is Ben and I'm on the way through Africa with my Toyota Hilux. Today's video will be a little bit different to all the other ones because many people have asked for it. I will make a room tour of my car. Is it the perfect car for Africa? Let's see. Yeah, I think I have to wait a little bit. It's a few hours later, the rain has been pouring down and it was stormy like crazy, but now I'm at a place where I have a little bit more space. Let's get into the room tour. The car itself is a 1994 Toyota Hilux extra cab, which means two doors, but a little bit extra space behind the seats. Usually there would be spare seats, but I have used it for my electrical system. The back of the Hilux or the cabin is made from 40 mm sandwich panels. The edges are covered in aluminum profiles to make it even stronger. The inside of the cabin is 1 meter 55, which means I cannot stand in there. However, it is okay. I absolutely can live with it. However, for a future build, I would think about a fold up roof. Then again, that adds complexity and also, you have some sort of fabric which makes the whole thing less well isolated, which could make things also worse. Next thing on this truck, I guess, very obvious are the tires. They're quite big. They're American sized, 33 inch tall and 12 and a half inch wide on 15 inch rims. Why am I running those tires? The question is quite easily answered. The car itself came with it. Most probably you're wondering about that anyway. The whole car itself I have bought like it is. I have just added some things which I needed like the roof rack, the whole electricity and also solar panels and some little things I will show you in a second. On the front here this is a Delta bag. It is quite cool. It also came with the car, luckily. And I carry all my recovery equipment in here. Then the car obviously has a snorkel, which is for driving through water. But for now, more importantly, is this thing up here. It's a Cyclone air inlet. It pre-filters the air and it does a very good job with dust and um, also with water. I was driving in snow or if it's a very fine rain, uh, you can see water being collected in here, which otherwise would end up in your air filter and make it dirtier or, or even wet. Very important detail, the Muzungu, which is the same as Tubab or many other words and which means white traveler or European traveler, whatever you want to call it. One other thing about the tires, also for future build or in future when I will change the tires, because at some point I need to, most probably when I'm in South Africa, I will run 16 inch rims, most probably a similar size tire, but everything in 16 inch, which makes life so much easier. 15 inch tires nowadays are very rare, especially in Europe and in Africa. Another very obvious change on the car is it has been lifted quite a lot. It's actually a five centimeter body lift. It has spacers underneath the body and it has also been lifted on the suspension side. Originally this car had independent front suspension. Now it has a solid axle from a Toyota Land Cruiser, but basically it is the same than it used to be on Hiluxes. All the parts on this car are replaceable or repairable with Toyota original parts. So although it is heavily modified, everything can be repaired at a normal Toyota store. Speaking of heavily modified, it says V6, but maybe you have noticed it sounds like a diesel, but the V6 only came as a petrol engine. So underneath here, there is a four cylinder 2.8 liter diesel engine from Toyota, which also has been in Hiluxes originally, not in this car, obviously. It is the 3L engine and Jan, the guy who built it, put a turbocharger on it. So it's a 3LT engine and it does a wonderful job. It sounds great, especially with the custom exhaust. But things like the custom exhaust, I would have not done to the car because this is unnecessary, but it's a good and fun thing to have. Let's jump inside the cabin and check it out there. Also inside, many things have changed from the original car. First of all, and very obvious, these seats 
are not original. These come from a these seats come from a Mark III Toyota Supra, and I'm very happy with them because they give you a little bit more hold and are very well adjustable. And uh, somehow they fit in here just with the original um, mounting holes. Just a little change which I have had done by a company in Berlin, but you can find them anywhere, is the steering wheel. Maybe some people know those old Toyotas. The steering wheels are very thin and slippery. So I thought, okay, why not have it covered in a nice material? I have chosen Alcantara here and a little bit of cushioning. So now the steering wheel or the steering is a lot better and in my opinion, a lot safer as well, which was to me a very nice addition. Because never forget, this seat here is where you usually spend the most time on a journey like this. As everything on this car, which I have done myself, I did it on the budget, but I also wanted to do it as good as possible. For the navigation, for example, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on known brands. What I've chosen here is an older rugged tablet with, uh, with a case and a RAM mount on the back. On the tablet, I'm running different apps offline and online, but if you like, I make a separate video or maybe even just a short about this topic. Also with everything, like I said, if you have more questions about it, if you want to know more, if you want to know details, leave them down below and feel free to ask. I will happily answer. One more thing I have changed in here from the car itself is the interior light as the original ones were basically useless as I have unplugged them from the door to not drain my battery if I have my doors open the whole time. I have designed and 3D printed a new light which fits perfectly into the original mounting holes again. So it's just a plug and play basically. And on top there is space for a switch panel where I have my spotlights and also my interior lights, air compressor and my rear diff lock. One more thing car related in here I have not been talking about is the gearing. It has a five speed manual gearbox and a modified transfer case. On this car you can switch into low range independent from your four wheel drive system, which means you can just stay in two wheel drive and use low range gears. It sounds very unimportant but it's quite a cool modification. Would I have done it if I would have built it myself? Most probably not. For being able to see better in the night, I have upgraded the bulbs to LED lights, which are illegal in Germany at least, most probably in Europe, but here nobody cares and they are very good, very bright and they help a lot. Here at the bumper, you can see nothing. I'm not just traveling without a winch, I'm also not having a number plate here because my number plate now is up there. I had a bad experience in Morocco where kids tried to break it off and that was the point where I decided to organize some copies. So this is not the original number plate and I mounted it up here. So even if it gets stolen, which is very unlikely up there, I don't really care. I would like to say that the car itself is not as important for your journey. It is important that you get out and that you are happy with your car, but it does not need to be as modified as this one. Have I used its full potential so far? Not at all. Will I use it? For sure not. But of course it is good to have. And I was very lucky to get this car. I will also link down below the guy who built it. He made himself another one. Not this size, a lot bigger. Check him out because that's quite amazing and a whole different way of traveling. The roof rack you see on my car is completely self-made. I have made it from 20 by 40 aluminum profiles. Overall, the roof rack turned out to be very good. I still think it is too heavy. Next time I would make it similar to what I have done with the table. But it is very good, it's sturdy, it carries a lot of load. Like 
this box here i have everything i need in there from a few spare parts maintenance things i have my tent in there and and all the tools back here are two fuel canisters each 20 liters as i only have the stock fuel tank in the car which means overall i have 100 a little over 100 liters of fuel which translates to roughly thousand kilometers so that means the car uses around 10 to 11 liters of fuel i think this is reasonable and it was one very important detail to me when i have made the decision to buy the car because this of course means way more costs per month when you're traveling when you're on the road and of course the roof rack has the lights mounted but i didn't plan this properly so this could be a lot better let's get into the more important topic the living space of the car like i said before it is made of sandwich panels 1 meter 55 high on the inside and it has very small windows which is good for some reasons but for ventilation it's not perfect let's start on this side over here not much is going on on this side these are my recovery boards two of them then i have the porch to fill in water here and diesel if i fill water in here it will be unfiltered so i rarely use this one this here however is not just my shower but i can also suck water in which i use the normal hose for showering for i just take off the shower head and suck in the water from those canisters these are two 20 liter water canisters and they are mounted on a custom aluminium mount which was there originally but i have extended it so it can fit two of them okay let's go over to the other side over here is my living space if i'm doing my stuff outside this is the table the same with the other side the sandboards they fold down and they were originally intended to be the table but i thought it is very uncomfortable to use the sandboards as a table so i have designed this one to fit on the mounts it is four millimeter aluminium i have well i have designed it a little bit i had it laser cut and bent it's very sturdy it was surprisingly cheap to manufacture i built this in fusion 360 and sent it off to a company in berlin they laser cut it they bent it and i could pick it up it was super simple and it was absolutely worth it i will leave it out for later to show you my cooking setup speaking of which i am cooking with electricity i have a 2000 watt induction stove and this also has to be powered that meant that i have to redo the whole electrical system in the car because it was not prepared for this what you can see here is first of all one normal 12 volt outlet for charging your phone for example and then i have one 230 volt outlet which are special plugs mostly or commonly used for public audio equipment the good thing is it is very small and it's a twist and turn and then it locks in place so i like this especially the smaller size and the ruggedness there are two more fittings here one of which is an inlet which means i can charge the car from a household socket when i have to so far i didn't have to but with the clouds and now with the rainy season and when cooking every day and not especially when not driving i run low on battery but i didn't run out of battery so far so i have to keep an eye on that but just in case i have an onboard charger which can charge my battery and also this thing here is 3d printed this was my first design i have ever made and it turned out to be quite good regarding the electricity i have put in a complete 12 volt system and also a 230 volt system it was a lot of work wiring was fun at the beginning 
but it was very annoying in the end. So everything is working. Seeing it now, I would change one or the other thing as it could be done better. But then again, it works perfectly and there is no fault with it. It's just not as neat as it could be. If you like, I will make a separate video about the electricity as it is a very complex topic and the video is already quite long. Something I haven't showed you yet on the outside is the awning. This one here is 2 meters by 2 meter 50. Originally it was 2 by 2 meters. I have had it extended by 50 centimeters because I have a complete tent for it, which is also being carried in there. If the sunlight allows, I will set this up in a minute as well. That's a very extensive room tour here. Next up, the back of the car. On top here, I have mounted one other awning. It is only 1 meter 30 wide, but 2 meters 40 long. It is not just good for shade, but it's also good for rain. So I can leave everything open and it's a lot more protected than it is without. Here on the back is also a little shovel, quite small, nothing special. And everything here, the shovel and also the canisters, they are locked in place. Before we go inside, one more thing on the outside. I have solar panels mounted here at the front and at the top. They are always at a different angle. The way I had to put them together, that would have been quite inefficient. So I designed a mounting system. I overcomplicated it a little bit, which can tilt them 45 degrees to the front. Did I finish this project before I left? No. Okay, now, finally, let's go and look at the inside. So, welcome to the inside of my car, finally. Let me show you around and let me think about what I can tell you. Where do I start? Let's start with the shelf here. It is also made from aluminium and Euro boxes. They are made from plastic. They are quite light and offer quite a bit of space. And also you can get some good equipment for it, like these containers here, for example, which perfectly fit inside here. In here is mainly food. Down here, down here, is my kitchen stuff. This is my organizer for cutlery and stuff, pans and pots. This here is my induction stove. I have one pressure cooker here. It's a very small one. With saving electricity, this is a very good investment. Saying that, I still have to use it more. Here I have running water. Right now, as you can see, the filter is not the best anymore. Very important for a trip to Africa are mosquito nets. This here, I have designed this just before I left. So it's prototype number one and it's okay, it's working. But again, it's by far not perfect. Same with the top one. It's the same with the top one and with the front one. I would improve on them in the future. Here in the corner, I have a fridge. It's an older angle cool box with 40 liters volume. It's totally enough and it's so good to have a cold drink sometimes. Another thing which is very important on a journey like this is going to toilet. Usually I go outside, use my shovel, but if I cannot do this because there are many people around or I'm in a city, then I have a backup plan and this is my separating or dry toilet here. It's also a euro box, which is very good. So in case this thing breaks at some point, you can also replace it with just ordering a new euro box in the same size. I almost forgot about my bed. This is either half the bed here, where if I'm lazy, I can just sleep on the small bench, but usually I take this part of the bed and it goes here and it makes 
one bigger bed which is quite comfortable and I can move around a little bit as well without falling down. What this looks like roughly I will show you now. Et voila! And then I have a bed sheet as well, but I'm too lazy for that now. Underneath here is storage space. This is where I keep all my clothing. Don't pack too much. I have packed way too much. In here is my water pump and my filtration system and my failed fan. This is the system. Basically what it does is this is the pump, this is the filter, this can suck water from the back and pumps it through the filter into the tank and vice versa. From the tank in the pump, through the filter and to the outlets. So that basically means the water in the tank is never unfiltered and even filtered twice when it comes out of the tap. So I think that's it. If you have any specific questions, leave them down below. I will now make a little montage of the car and how I set it up on the outside. So enjoy this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, leave me a like or a subscription. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.